Imagine a mini power supply in your house or car that made it possible for you to be off the grid. What if that source of energy was totally cleaned and powered by simple tap water? Well, a Greek scientist claims to have created a machine that converts water into power. As part of our occasional innovation series, special correspondent Malcolm Brabant traveled to the inventor's island home. Physicist Petros Zagrafos spent 30 years trying to work out how, using minimal energy, he could break down the water molecule H2O into its component parts, hydrogen and oxygen. Now he thinks he's cracked it. With this, his mini power station, which he hopes will help reverse global pollution. Since I have children and grandchildren, my son has just made me a grandfather. I cannot go on watching this planet being so violently abused. George Schill from southern Germany, whose company makes solar panels, is interested in helping develop and market the invention. He headed out of Athens for a nearby Greek island to inspect it for the first time. For the people, this would be exactly what they want, exactly what they can use at home. But for the big energy suppliers, this will be a problem, because if everybody takes his own energy, nobody will need the grid anymore. In the inventor's modest home, there was a last-minute technical briefing beneath the bust of Zeus, the ancient Greek god who dispensed power through thunderbolts. Then colleague Pantelis Kotsianis gave a demonstration. We have no wires, no external wires from the grid connected to the system. It's standalone. We connect later on uh, to the mains. Mm -hmm. We get off the grid and then we'll put the, uh, the water from the glass uh, into this tube. And within 40 seconds, about, we'll have the, uh, the power of the, the, the whole house. Right now that we are off the grid and turn off the, uh, the switch, we'll prove that this connector has no power at all. Okay. There's no power on this connector. Okay. So I'm putting some water slowly right now. And we just connect the mains right now to the machine. And the lights are open now. And you can just, well, basically you can run the whole house. <laughs> and you can turn on the TV and anything else you want right now. How much power do you have? How much power do you have now? You're producing right now? Uh, it's about 800 watts. Which was enough to enable the inventor's wife to prepare lunch. The average American house needs about 30,000 watts per hour. It's a very brand new technology, never existed before. We're using frequencies. With frequencies, you don't have to use high power. You don't need to use excessive energy or really any energy at all in order to get the fuel that you need, hydrogen. Every rock or every bridge, he has a very specific resonance. When you uh, vibrate a system at a specific uh, frequency, which is the system's frequency, that system would break. So you don't need force to do that. It's similar to the biblical story of trumpets destroying the walls of Jericho. This is the Acropolis in Athens, not Jericho, but the temples date from the same era. It was not a religious miracle that brought down Jericho's walls, but sound waves from the trumpets. The inventor claims water can be unlocked in the same way. There are three stages to this machine. The first is motion. The act of pouring the water generates energy to start the resonance process. The second is oscillation. A new compound created by the inventor helps to produce the hydrogen. The third is the exhaust system, where the only byproduct is room temperature water vapour. Despite having rich potential for renewable energy, Greece is heavily dependent upon fossil fuel. Much of its electricity comes from lignite, a peat-like substance transported along conveyor belts from vast open cast mines. Lignite is one of the world's most polluting fuels, and according to environmentalists, these plants are responsible for ailments such as cancer that cost the Greek health service up to $4 billion a year. The sea used to provide us with all the fish we needed, 
But now, I can see that life is diminishing on the planet, and its human beings are responsible for this. So I would really like this invention to be made available worldwide so that it may halt further destruction of the planet as much as possible. The science employed by Zographos has been validated by a committee of Greek physicists. Independent engineer Lampis Tomasis was a skeptic, but is now a believer. I use the spectrum analyzers, I use the analyzers for the exhaust fumes, uh, I use the oscilloscopes and uh, other uh, instruments as well. And uh, I am convinced now that uh, the instrument is working perfectly, uh, does not produce any dirt to the environment, and uh, the only product produced is hydrogen, which is very clean for the environment. Two hours after the machine was started, it needed topping up. We added some fuel to our system, so we depleted it with running everything in the house. The team behind this project has rejected several multi-million dollar offers to the rights to the invention because they want to control what happens to it. But they're fairly optimistic and they're talking in terms of this possibly being the start of a new age. But there has to be a word of caution because there have been several other great Greek innovations in the past that have died at birth. They've been strangled by red tape and vested interests. To obtain an independent assessment, we went to the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen, named after one of the most important contributors to modern physics and the atomic age. I'm uh, extremely skeptical of uh, the way that it allegedly is functioning. I seriously doubt that there is uh, excess energy from this device. Jakob Frederiksen says the invention would be fantastic if true. But first he says the science must be subjected to peer review and that other experts need to be able to reproduce the results. He believes that using frequencies to split hydrogen and oxygen is valid, but doubts the process can yield sufficient extra power. Let's assume that we have this uh, huge molecule of, of water, right? Oxygen and hydrogen bound together in the water molecule. In order to split this, you need to really pull it apart. I mean, split these atoms apart. Now you have spent uh, quite a lot of energy to split them. You can regain a part of that energy by combining them, by combustion processes. You, you already spent the energy to split it, and you only get part of that energy back when you recombine it by burning the, the hydrogen. And that difference will not be a positive one. In response, the Greeks say they'll happily agree to a peer review once they've obtained a worldwide patent. They also insist their system does not conform to the standard rules of electrolysis or separating of hydrogen and oxygen. George Schull, the German businessman, headed towards home, satisfied with the Greeks' claims that their process uses minimal energy and is highly efficient. He predicted that if all went well, many home power stations could go into production within a year. I was really excited about this invention and it was 100% or over 100% fulfilled, and I, I'm really, I'm really satisfied that I did this trip because I did not expect that the machine runs as we have seen as it runs. I want this invention to spread as far as possible to the last village in Africa where the children don't have an electric light to read and study by. The next test for Petros Zagrafos and his team will be to build a 200 kilowatt machine about the size of two fridges to light up a small Greek island fueled by the surrounding water. He hopes to stage a trial within the next six months. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in Greece.